In this video, we're going to start talking a little bit about medium and low temperature refrigeration. Now, what I'm trying to do with this video is introduce you to the refrigeration trainer that I have built. We're going to talk about the basic system components. We're going to talk a little bit about the basic refrigerant cycle on how it goes through the trainer. Now, there is some background noise in this. You can't avoid it when you're working with live equipment. Um, the one other thing that I do want to ask is please subscribe. You get notifications when the new videos come out. It lets me know I'm doing something right. It helps get the word out about my channel. And subscriptions are pretty important. It's really simple to do. On my channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Okay, And then you get all the latest notifications, the videos, and everything as they come out. So we are going to start talking about the refrigeration trainer. In this next series of videos, I want to use our new refrigeration trainer to start talking about medium and low temperature refrigeration. Okay, now this is a trainer. This is not an actual refrigeration system. The reason I like using a trainer for this purpose is that I'm able to set things up with different scenarios, different temperature ranges, and different components really easily. Okay, because everything's all piped in and we wire things in as we need them. But let's start off with the basics. Okay, the basics we have, no matter what system you have, are all going to be the same. You have your compressor. You have your condenser. You have a condenser fan. You have a receiver. We have our line sets. We have a liquid line. We have a suction line. Okay, around the back here, because again, we have a trainer environment, we have our metering device. This is our TXV. I also have a cab tube connected. Currently, the system's running with a TXV. I have access to wiring terminals to connect in different sequences. But let's start off with the basics, okay? Oh, and in the cabinet here, I do have my evaporator. I'm not going to open it right now because I want to get it. I'm trying to get it cold. So, but let's start off with the basics. Our heart of the refrigeration cycle is the compressor. Okay, the compressor takes my low pressure vapor coming into it, raises the pressure and the temperature. We talked about that in some of our other videos, and discharges it in. The discharge line. The discharge line runs across and comes into the top of the condenser. Okay, the condenser is a series of tubes and fins. Okay, we pull air across. Okay, the airflow is coming in the front here, coming through and coming out. Okay, this condenser is a series condenser, not a parallel. There's no manifold, but it's a three row, it has three rows that the refrigerant pass through. That's to save space. The refrigerant comes out of the condenser down at the bottom. Okay, it comes through into our receiver. The receiver is a storage tank. Okay, it's designed to hold liquid refrigerant and ensure that only liquid refrigerant comes out into the liquid line. The liquid line comes out of the bottom of the receiver. I have a liquid line solenoid, we'll talk more about that later. Comes through my filter dryer, and then weaves its way up through my liquid line, okay? And comes back into my TXV, my metering device. The metering device, low pressure liquid refrigerant, otherwise known as flash gas, comes out and goes back to the evaporator coil. The evaporator coil is a simple two fan evaporator coil, okay, and that boils off refrigerant as it absorbs heat from the inside. So we'll close the cabinet on that, okay, and that's the basic refrigeration cycle. 